All right, so in this problem, we're finding the geometric mean of these two numbers, 2 times the square root of 6 and 3 times the square root of 8. And we want to leave the answer in simplest radical form. So I want to go through the process of solving for geometric mean and then give a little bit of background as to what it is and why we use it towards the end of the video. So let's start with how do we, how do we solve this. Well, with the geometric mean, we're going to be multiplying. Unlike right, with arithmetic means, where we add, we're here we're multiplying. So here what we do, in the most direct way possible, and we state it this way, we multiply our two numbers, 2 times the square root of 6 times 3 times the square root of 8. And here, to do this, we can rearrange these terms because 2 times the square root of 6 and 3 times the square root of 8 that's all multiplication, so we can commute numbers around and think of this as 2 times 3 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 8. Now 2 times 3, that's 6, right? And square root of 6 times the square root of 8 is the same thing as the square root of 48. Right? It's the basic property of um, square roots or, or exponents, really, because this is really the half exponent, but that's a big conversation. Anyway, we can multiply these two square roots like we do numbers. Now we want to reduce this, um, right? But what's interesting is here we're taking the geometric mean of this product. Since there are two numbers, right, before we reduce this, let's, let's just look at what this really is. The geometric mean, right, what we're going to do is take the square root of this product. And let me just briefly say in general what the, the geometric mean is because otherwise I feel like this would be overwhelming. So here we, we had two numbers and we multiplied them. So in the geometric mean, no matter how many numbers you're given, let's call these numbers A1, A2, whatever, A3, those are the numbers you're given, you're always going to multiply them, right? So we're taking the product of all the numbers we're given up to whatever, AN. So the geometric mean, that, that'll always be our first step is to multiply. But then I, I think the slightly trickier step is what do you do with that product? Well, the mean, you don't always take the square root. What you take is the nth root. In other words, if there are two terms, like there are here, that would be when you take the square root, right? Square roots is the second root. If there were three numbers and multiplying them, then we take the third root, right? Because in that case, there would be three numbers, so n would be three. n represents the number of terms, right, or numbers given. So if there are three, you take the third root. If there are four terms, you take the fourth root, and so forth. So that's how the geometric mean works. Here we're given two numbers. We take the square root of our product. So the square root of 6 times the square root of 48. Okay, so what do I do with this? Well, this really, I want to think is in terms of exponents, right? This might make it a little bit easier for me to deal with this, right? Square root is the half power. So here, the square root of 6 we can't, can't be broken down. But the square root of 48 to the, to the half power, what's that? Well, that's really equal to 6 times 48 to the fourth power. All I'm doing there is saying the square root of the square root, or that the half of the half power is the fourth root. So we're trying to find the fourth root of 48, and right, also the square root of 6. The square root of 6 can't be broken down any further, so we'll leave that as the square root of 6, right? And here, the fourth root of 48, well, how do we even deal with that? Well, what I would do to, to deal with any root, like the fourth root of 48 or whatever, is to find the prime factorization. So here we have 2 times 24, 24 is 2 times 12, 12 is 3 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So what you're really looking for here with a perfect fourth root is a number times itself four times, which we have here, right? Uh, that can be broken down. So since we found that, we know there is at least a way to break down the fourth root of 48 because the 48, what we just showed you here, equals 2 to the fourth power times 3. So 3 we can't really touch, right? That's going to be the fourth root of 3 leave that in there. But what about 2 to the 4th? What's the, what's the 4th root of 2 to the 4th? Well, let's think about this for a second. 2 to the 4th equals 2, oops, equals 
times 2 times 2 times 2. And the fourth root of 2 would be a number of times itself, 4 times. That gives you what you're looking at, right? And multiply these 4 together at 16. And you can always see the root right here, right? 2 is being multiplied by itself 1, 2, 3, 4 times to get 2 to the 4th. That's the definition of 2 to the 4th. So the 4th root of 16, or the 4th the power of 16 is the 4th root, is just 2. So here we broke down the 4th root of 48 as 2, right, times the 4th root of 3. And here you get this odd combination of radicals, but really I think what you what you reached here is, uh, I think, a stopping point. So 2 times the square root of 6 times the 4th root of 3. Now, um, you know, you are multiplying here, and and you might think that there's a way to break it down further, but really, both the square root of 6 and the 4th root of 3, um, right, there, there really isn't a way to break that down. Anyway, so that's, that's kind of our our ending point here. So so what does geometric mean? Where does it come from? Well, it, it, is, it is derived from geometry as far as I know. If you drew a right triangle, right? This is my right triangle. And let's label the right angle here. What, what, what's interesting is that if you were to draw a line from the vertex here to uh, and make it perpendicular to the, the hypotenuse, which is this, this side right here, hypotenuse. Um, so we can, once we draw that, we can label these points. Let's call this A, B, C, and D. So it turns out that this length right here, BD, right, what does that equal? Well, if we multiply AD times DC, in other words, if we multiply the two segments on the hypotenuse, Right, those two segments formed by line BD, and then take the square root of them, that's exactly how long BD is. So here you can see that this is a geometric mean, right, as a picture as, um, as a picture in a triangle. That's what it is. So if you're multiplying two numbers, you take the square root of it, and that happens to be related to this right triangle. But you might be more interested in application. With, with arithmetic mean, what you're, I think, usually first introduced to when you when you have a mean, what what happens? Well, you have a bunch of terms a, right, plus a two plus all the way up to dot dot dot, a sub n. So we have you have n terms, right, and they're all a. And you're adding them up, whatever, and you divide them by what? You divide them by by n, the number of terms. Well, this is very different from the geometric mean. It isn't always uh, some something that's very useful. For example, in investment, right? When you're trying to figure out, on average, right? On average, how much um, are, or let me say it this way: What is the average rate, average rate of interest? Like, how do you how do you think about that um, with investment? Well, let's say, you know, really simple case here, you have $100 in the bank. And the first year, you get 10% on that 100. So that means you have the times 1, the original, plus 0 0.1. In other words, you have 100, use the distributed property, plus 1 tenth of 100, which is, of course, $10, right? So you have $110. Okay, great. Second year, though, let's say the interest changes, and you're doing really well, you're 20%. Well, you can think that you have the 110, which is 100 times 1 plus 0 0.10, and then you're taking that, and let me just color code this correctly, you're taking that original amount and then multiplying it by the new percentage. So it's the original, and then that times, let's say if it was 20%, 1 plus 0 0.2. So here you have 20% on now 100 and 110. Well, 10% 10 on 110 would be $11, so now you have $22, or 132 in total. And then let's do, let's do one more here. And you know what? Let me try.
try to highlight this in a better way by color coding. Sorry about that. So the, of the second year, I'll, I'll do in yellow, 1 plus 0 0.2. And this equals 132, uh, sorry. And the third year, right, let's, let's say you have, I don't know, 50% um, interest. No, 40% interest, sorry. So 40% you're doing really well. Things are, it's either a scam maybe your investment or uh, things are just working out really well for you. So I'm just rewriting the previous equations because those equal our previous amounts and then I'm tacking on this new percentage, 1 plus 0 0.4 or 40%. So now I'm getting 40% on 132. We can think about, you know, that 10% of 132 equals 13.2, right, divide by 10. So here we can do 13.2 times 4, right, to see what we're adding on to this amount here. 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 12, 4 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.8, right? So it's $52.80. So we add it to the 130, 132. Right? So, sorry, um, $52 plus $132 is $184, right? And 80 cents. Okay. Wh why do we just do that? Well, this is actually a really great example for the geometric mean. Because on average, if, if I was to ask you, well, how much did you, did you make? What was your rate of interest? Well, you could say, oh, well, the average rate, well, we had 10% the first year, and then we had 20%, and then we had 40%. Let me take the arithmetic mean. Well, if you added these numbers up, right, as we do here, we add them up, 10, 20, and 40. That would be 70, and you divide it by 3, right? And if we're not sure about that, we can just plug it in here, 70 divided by 3 equals 23 and a third. So according to the the mean that you're probably used to, that means your average, your average amount here in interest was 23 and a third percent. But is it accurate? Well, let's just start this process over, but on the calculator here. We start with $100, and we multiply that by 1.23. That's 23% added on, $23. Then we take 1, 2, 3, $123, and then the second you multiply that by 1, sorry, by the same percentage, which is 23.3. So let's see if this is accurate, um, or let's see what happens here at least. So according to the arithmetic mean, on average, we made 23.3%. So if on the first year we had $100, we multiply that by 100 or 1 plus 23.3%, which is point two three 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 percent okay so so we have hundred twenty three dollars and a third of a dollar after the first year on average we're saying and then we take that amount and multiply it by the same percentage the second year one point two three 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 okay and the second year we have hundred and fifty two dollars and eleven cents or point one 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 and then we take that and multiply it by one point two Three, 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 three on the third year, and look what happens. Now this might, you know, we have 187.60, let's say. 187.60. Well, that's more than we actually made. Now on this scale, that's not really a problem, right? The arithmetic means pretty close. But on larger scales, you can imagine this difference being huge. So let's look and see how the geometric mean is a much better approximation for this type of process than the arithmetic mean, the mean that you probably have learned first. So, so what, how would we connect all of this to this, this process right here? Well, mathematically, right, we have 100, and we're saying, is it possible to find a rate, so 1 plus r, in this case to the third power, that equals what just happened, which is 100, right, times 1 plus the first rate, we'll call R1, and then times 1 plus the second rate, R2, and then times 1 plus the third rate. 
In other words, you know, these are all three different rates, but what value of r to the third, you know, what value of r could we plug in and then take 1 plus r raised to the third power and get the same exact result? Well, to kind of break this down a little bit, I would divide by 100 on both sides, right? And here, you can, I think, see it a little bit better. 1 plus r to the third power equals 1 plus r1 times 1 plus r2 times 1 plus r3. So now, you know, we're trying to find this rate r. We know we're given rates 1, 2, and 3. What is this other rate over here? So to undo the third power, I take the third root of both sides, right? And take the third root of the right-hand side and the third root of the left-hand, of the, sorry, that backwards. Well, the third root of both sides. The third root of the left-hand side over here and the third power cancel each other out. So we just get 1 plus r. And I'll leave the parentheses out. On the right-hand side, it does not cancel out. So we have the third root of 1 plus r1, right, times 1 plus r2 times 1 plus r3. And in this case, we'll know what r is, so we subtract 1 on both sides. So minus 1 and minus 1 here. This cancels out. Okay. Oh boy. So we have this. That this average rate would equal the third root of the product of the interests minus 1 here. And think about what that, you know, with the geometric mean, we said if there are three terms, 1, 2, 3, you multiply them all and take the third root. Well, here is exactly what we're doing. So let's see how this geometric mean then ends up applying to this problem. So we have our three rates that we're going to multiply, r1, r2, and r3. We just add one to each of them, just as we did in the calculations here. So bear with me, I just want to show you that this actually works. So 1.1 times 1.2 times 1.4, that's our product, 1.848. We take the third root of that, I raise it to the 1 divided by 3 power or 1 third power. The 1 third power is the third root. And we get this number, 1.227158, and so forth. Then we take 1 away, right, as our formula told us here in this problem. So the geometric mean says that 0.22715, so about 22.7. That's a better average of your interest. So let's apply that. Start with $100, see what happens. Multiply it by, by what? Well, 1 plus this decimal up here. So second answer, okay. So after the first year, 122. Then to take that number and multiply it by the same thing, one, right, plus 0.227158487, close parentheses, we're at 150, and then last but not least, multiply that by one plus point two two seven one five eight four eight sorry seven nine and we get this one eighty four point eight and if it you know here if it was rounding better it would get you actually point eight six in other words it gets you the exact amount you you need sorry one point one eighty four point eight which is exactly what we have here so that that actually gives you the exact amount you would have based on that average rate over the years. So if you're looking for an average rate in finance, the geometric mean is a much better approximation, especially for compound interest. Thanks.